So the Georgia Office of Victim Services, as we were just demonstrating, represents three state agencies, the Department of Corrections, State Board of Pardons and Paroles, and the Department of Community Supervision. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about each agency. In Georgia, and most of these statistics are from FY 2020, um, the Department of Corrections has 35 state prisons, 15 transitional centers, and I believe that number counts a new one that's coming on uh, in a few months. 23 county prisons for private prisons, and we have over 49,000 offenders incarcerated. Now that number might have changed a little bit since COVID, but that's, like I said, from last fiscal year. State Board of Pardons and Paroles, we um, have paroled over 10,000 offenders. Um, we've processed about 2,100 parole revocations, 763 pardon applications received, with 402 of those granted. And all of that is with five uh, full-time board members appointed by the governor uh, for seven-year terms. And of course, we have Mr. Herring here, pointed that out earlier but he is one of our five full-time voting members. Department of Community Supervision was formed in 2015. Um, they have 59 field offices throughout the state with 36 day reporting centers. Uh, we have over 1,400 community supervision officers, um, 256,000 offenders under active supervision. I believe Georgia is one of the largest um, uh, has one of the largest populations of people under some sort of community supervision. And we have over 20,000 victims who have received restitution payments. I'll turn it back over to Keir. So just to, just to talk a little bit about who we are and what we do and how we got here. So our mission, as you can see, is to provide post-sentence support and information to crime victims, their families, and members of the community. And we do this representing three agencies, as Rita said, the, 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 the Department of Corrections, the State Board of Pardons and Paroles, and the Department of Community Supervision. So essentially, when, once uh, the victim has been working with a victim advocate um, during the, the, the pre-conviction stage, and they've worked with them, they've got them through the, the process of being, uh, the offender being sentenced, they'll either give them information or register that victim and then pretty much hand them over to us. So we handle all of their post-conviction victim services needs. So how do we get here? So prior to 2005, both the State Board of Pardons and Paroles and the Department of Corrections each had their own victim services unit. So just, you know, even though we have some people with some great memories in this game, so it didn't work out quite as well as it, as it could have, just imagine the challenge that, that, that brings to a victim. You know, you're registering with the parole board, and so you, you may know when that offender is coming up for a consideration, but you somehow, the information doesn't get to the Department of Corrections, so you have no idea when he actually gets released. You know, or vice versa, you may know release information, but you don't get a chance to really provide information to the parole board. So the leaders of those organizations in 2005 got together and they combined their offices and we became the, the corrections and parole board office of victim services. Basically creating a single point of entry, a one-stop shop for victims in the state of Georgia. In 2015, the Department of Community Supervision was created and we became the Georgia Office of Victim Services, basically addressing all of our victims' needs, you know, for the most part, um, post-conviction. And so this cooperation, and you know, we like to use the terminology strength and unity, is seen even better if you take a look at our organization chart. So each color represents an organization or in this situation, uh, a grant. And so if you look at the green, that's victim services. We're only budgeted for about six different positions, yet we, we cover the entire state. So each agency not only donates support financially, but they donate staff. So the State Board of Pardons and Parole has contributed three, three, um, three staff members to, to help fulfill our mission. The Department of Corrections has, has supported us with two members. The uh, Department of Community Supervision, another two. And of course, we have two who are on a, a vocal grant. So it's just a really good example of the commitment each agency has made to, to assisting and, and working with the victims of the state of Georgia. So what, do we, what all do we do? So as of, pretty much as of May, we have over 32,000 registered victims, and that's actually supported by 15 staff members. So those 15 staff members are covering the entire state of Georgia. And again, only a few are actually budgeted for the for Office of Victim Services. And FY20, we actually had over 24,000 pieces of mail processed. So that's 24,000 letters of protest coming into our office, victim in impact statements, victim notification request forms, and over 24,000 letters going out to victims to notify them about what's going on. And we had over 10,000, nearly 11,000 phone calls that we either took or made out to or in front of victims. And so Destiny's gonna talk a little bit about our statutory requirements. Okay, so.
So by law, the three agencies we represent have certain requirements as it relates to crime victims. These are called statutory requirements. So the first set applies to the Department of Corrections. So registered victims, we are required to notify them of the offender custodial status if offender is being released from prison, uh, compassionate reprieve, work release, escapes, recaptures. We have six hours to notify a victim of an escape and that notification is made uh, through the phone. Recaptures, we have 24 hours. We also make a phone call followed by a letter. And if the offender dies in the custody of the Department of Corrections, we will notify the registered victim. Next, we have the State Board of Pardons and Parole. We are required by law to provide 20-day advance notice if the parole board is considering any favorable action. So that gives victims the time to um, submit any concerns. Uh, notify the registered victim within 72 hours of a final release date or any pardons consideration. Lastly, we have the Department of Community Supervision requires us the coordination of payment and disbursement of court order restitution and any probation termination petitions. So since we represent the three agencies, we have access to their case management system to provide information to crime victims. And their case management um, systems, uh, data exchange occurs between each of the case management systems. First, we have the Department of Corrections. They use SCRAD. All of our victim information is housed in this case management system. Because victim um, information is confidential, not everyone has access to that information. Any interactions we have with victims uh, via telephone, face-to-face, -face, is documented in confidential case notes. We uh, register crime victims in our notification in Georgia Victim Information Program, which we refer to as Georgia VIP. Um, Georgia VIP is our automated notification system. Victims can call and receive the offender's location, parole eligibility date, and maximum release date. Uh, also, if the offender is released from the custody of GDC, a phone call will go out to that registered victim. Notification letters are generated through Scribe. Scribe also provides us with the offender's custodial status, maximum release date, performance incentive credit, and restitution information, like when an offender makes a payment. Next, we have the State Board of Pardons and Parole. The name of their case management system is Georgia Parole Evidence-Based Data System. Because we don't have parole hearings in Georgia, everything is done electronically. So we make sure for victims, the offender flag is registered. So if the victim provides us with pictures, a victim impact statement, letter of protest, we will upload that information in this case management system. And the board members will have access to all that information. Again, everything is confidential, so it is limited access. Uh, we refer to the, their case management system as GPEDS, so it provides the parole eligibility date, the tentative parole month, and the final decision of parole and parts and commutation considerations. Lastly, again, we have the Department of Community Supervision. Their name of their case management system is Georgia Reentry Web Portal, again, electronic file system. We mark the offender's file for victim, registered victim, so if anything goes on, they contact our office. We do have access to uh, the offender's community supervision status, access to the officer's case note, and restitution information when the payment is made. So in order to increase our registration, we collaborated with the prosecuting attorney's office, I mean, prosecutor's attorney council of Georgia. In 2017, we created the three month process. Because we represent Department of Corrections, they generate a list of offenders who have been transferred to their custody within the last three months that's without a registered victim associated to their case. That information is passed to our office. We filter that information according to judicial circuits, and we uh, provide that information to the point of contact at the prosecutor's attorney council, and then they disperse it to their local victim advocates to get people registered. So the, the victim offender dialogue, and I, I know a couple of you guys have, but has, has everyone heard of the victim offender dialogue? So it's, it's a pretty awesome program. And so um, a program that started for us in, in 2012, just in case you notice, that's, that's green there, just, just in case that becomes important in the, in, in the future. And so the a program started for in our office in 2012. And of course, it's a victim-centered program where we try to put uh, a victim um, of a violent crime 
to have a, and, and organizers so they have a one-time meeting with their offender inside the Department of Corrections custody. Um, it's one of those one of those magical moments, to be honest with you. You know, regardless of how it works, where you give that victim an opportunity to say those things that he or she never got an opportunity to say to that offender, or ask those questions that only that offender can answer. And so, um, you know, um, we we do a 40-hour training um, with, with all of our facilitators, who are usually members of the uh, staff of the Department of Corrections, who are volunteering their time with us. Our staff, of course, and then staff with the Department of Community Supervision. And so they go through a 40-hour intense detailed training, and then we we cap it off with a two-day workshop just with more details of exactly how we do what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so after, you know, and generally the high sets of this, we, we organize a facilitator with the victim to basically find out what it is that victim wants or needs. What is it that they want to say or want to ask? And once, once we get a good idea of that, then we go meet with that offender to first find out, one, if he or she is willing to participate, because it is completely voluntary. And then two, do they, do they accept responsibility for that crime? Because if they don't accept responsibility for it, then we're not going to continue. And once they do, then it's just a matter of meeting one time with that offender, one time with that victim, one time with that offender, and then back and forth for what could be anywhere from three to four months to a year so we're finally ready to come to the table and meet inside the Department of Corrections for our dialogue. So it's been a great program for us um, since we've been doing it. Um, and it's, it's really one of the, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, when you do one, I mean, you, you, sometimes in, in our work, you, you, you kind of miss, like you feel like you're doing something. But when you do a victim offender dialogue, you know you've, you're here for a purpose. Our next ones are victim support partners. And so what we start finding out and start realizing when we were going around the state doing different programs and meeting with victims, that sometimes the same victims would be at every single event that we spoke at. Every time we had a victim visitor's day, which we'll talk about in a few moments, every time we were at a, a different victim's fair or event, the same victims will always be there. And so and we start talking to them, trying to figure out why were they there. And, they, they pretty much said that they want to do more than just be a victim. You know, they've moved past the, the victim to survivor stage and they want to give back and, and help other victims and help other people. And so we created, or rather they created, the Victim Support Partners, which is a group of victims who, who, who try to find a way to help other victims. And we realized that nobody understands the, the struggles and the challenges of being a victim than other victims. And, you know, so they, they get together and they support us at some of our events. So they're helping victims understanding um, what it's like to meet with a parole board member at a Victim Visitors Day, kind of preparing them for maybe the questions they may want to ask and kind of calming them down. They're helping them um, register with our office, helping them understand the, 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 the letters and the forms and how to write a letter, how to speak to the board. Um, you know, they're, they're actually speaking at some of our events or speaking at other events for us on, our, on, on, on behalf of the Office of Victim Services. So it's been a really awesome group. And, of course, because of COVID and, and just going back, I just thought about that, but um, one thing I didn't mention is that the Victim Offender Dialogue, because of COVID, of course, it took a pause, and last year, we actually had an opportunity to do our first remote Victim Offender Dialogue, you know, and, and that kind of coincides with the Victim Support Partners. Because of COVID, we had to take a, a break from it, but one of the goals um, now that we're towards the end of has been to try to get that, that group back together, get the gang back together, get, get them retrained, get, get some new partners, and start getting back out to the community and helping other people. And finally, um, our Victim Visitors Day, which is what we call our, our premier event. You know, this is where we um, actually collaborate with the prosecuting, um, with the different prosecutions, uh, prosecutors, um, and their uh, victim advocates around the state. And, and, and in essence, bring the parole board out of the office and into the community. You know, for the most part, um, people and victims communicate with the parole board in writing. You know, whether it's a, a letter, or email, or fax, that's how they're reviewing most of the files. But this gives the, the victim and, and members of the community an opportunity to have a face-to-face -face meeting um, with leaders, with the parole board, with leaders of the Department of Corrections, and leaders of the Department of Community Supervision. Um, we started this program in 2006, and since we started, over 4,100 people have had an opportunity to meet with the different leaders of these organizations, you know, and ask the people who actually make the decisions, you know, why he's at a particular prison, why he was released, these are the people that know and can answer it better than anything we can ever answer. It's been an awesome program, and, and so we start, um, since we've done it, um, we've had people from all, every county in the state of Georgia, 159 counties. We had uh, people from all the different states. We've actually had people from a couple other countries who are registered with us show up and attend. And it's been a, it's been a great program. I don't know if you, if the, the, the light shines there, but someone, someone on the picture is actually in the room, but um, it's, it's been a really great event to, just to bring the parole board out, bring people in, and, and you know, we usually have the, not just leaders from the agencies we represent, but from other, other agencies, other state agencies there, so if people have questions, this is what a great opportunity to ask them when you've got all these leaders together. So we, we start wondering, 
Um, and actually, let me just, this is just giving you an idea of all the different places we've actually been around in the state of Georgia. Um, a couple key things, I can't leave the, the microphone, but if you look at the bottom, we start ranking at, at one point to try to figure out how many people have we seen and how many cases have we seen. So starting around, looks like 2000, and, um, looks like to around 2000 and 15, we start counting not just the number of people that we're seeing at these events, but how many actual MA cases are we reviewing. And so we start kind of ranking them, and you see, and we had one in DeKalb County in 2018, which was so big, we had to make it a two-day event, because we ended up having over 221 days and 136 the other day. So actually, that, that the DeKalb County is the, the number one for the number of cases we've seen, 101 cases. And we had one in Jonesboro in 2016, which is the most number of people. We actually had 223 people come out from all the different um, counties in Georgia, all the different states across the country, just to meet with board members and um, leaders of the organizations we represent. So we start thinking, and um, one of the things I passed out to you guys is a souvenir book that you get a chance to look at. And every time we do one, every time we have one of these events, we create a souvenir booklet um, for a couple of different reasons. One, to give victims something to take home. You know, not just the information they're getting from those agencies, but something they can have in their hand to remember it. It has different letters, as you guys saw, um, from, from the, the leaders that, are, that actually were at the event. Um, they have different um, kind of like ads about the different organizations that we represent and other organizations that victims can find a resource in. But one of the biggest things is um, we have a, a memorial page, you know, if you get a chance to look through it, where victims who, who've lost someone can actually have a little, just something to remember their loved one there. We've actually had a couple times where we've actually done a video. We have victims send in pictures, you know, and we kind of make them to a, a nice little montage. So while they're waiting to meet with the board member or the different leaders, they can kind of remember their loved ones. It's just a real, real awesome event. But we started looking a couple years ago, obviously, is this worth doing? You know, the parole board and the Department of Corrections and the, state and the Department of Community Supervision invest a lot of time and money in this event. And so we want to make sure we have some type of measure to find out, is this worth doing? Should we keep doing it? Is it a benefit to our victims? And so we do an exit survey. And before anyone leaves, we ask them to, if they would just to ask them, answer a couple questions about how's it going. And as you can see, it's been pretty positive. You know, there's always a couple people who just who are angry no matter what you do, no matter how well you treat them. Um, but for the most part, you know, 90% um, found they strongly agree their time was well spent. You know, 99% feel all their questions were answered. You know, 96% would have recommend other crime victims and their families attend a victim visitor's day. So it's, it's extremely successful. You know, people coming out, they come out and they get their answers, their questions answered. You know, I mean, and it's not always the answers they want, but they have the information. And that's what's the most important thing. Um, just a little bit of a couple other details. You know, what did you most like about your experience today? Some of the answers we got, they took the time to listen and didn't rush me. It means a lot that I wasn't pushed along. Um, that's important because when they meet with a parole board member, there's a time limit. If that victim wants to talk and ask questions for an hour, then the board members don't leave until every victim is seen, every victim has their opportunity to have their say. Um, the ability to ask direct questions and get immediate answers. I got a better understanding of the process. Able to speak to the people that run the process. Again, it's important to speak to people that make the decisions. You know, and then it's the, the first time our voices and concerns and anxiety was listened to and heard. And I obtained a lot of knowledge about the inmate. Real information, I can now be notified if there are any changes to his status. I'm very satisfied with what I heard today. You know, I can share the information with, our, with my family. Whenever we do one of these events in the different counties, we actually find, we actually pull a, a list of all of the offenders who've been convicted from that particular area and working with the prosecuting attorney counties, um, prosecuting attorneys, victims advocate, we try to connect with every victim, even if they aren't registered, we try to find those victims in that area to get them to this event. So we can get them registered, and if they are registered, they can have, again, a say-so in the process.